and welcome to my tutorial series on Unity 2D for Total Beginners. I'm making this tutorial because uh, there seem to be a lot of tutorials on Unity 2D on the internet, but none of them are geared for people who have never used Unity before. Most of them are geared for people who have used Unity 3D, but don't know how to use the 2D, the new 2D um, uh, things that have been added to it. So this is for people who are new to Unity and want to jump right into 2D. The first thing you want to do uh, when you start a game in Unity is you're going to go to File and New Project. Every single different game you do in Unity is going to be a different project. Um, first you want to select the project location and the project name, so browse for a location that you like and then set the name to be whatever you want it to be. Uh, I'm just going to call mine Unity Tutorial. First of all, these import settings, uh, this will, if you want to, you can uh, import specific things. Unity has several pre-created um, packages to uh, help with certain things. Most of these things, I will say, are for 3D though, so these aren't going to be, most of these aren't very helpful to us. Um, an important thing you need to make sure you get is set of details for 2D, not 3D, because we're doing 2D. Um, so that will uh, change a variety of things within the editor to make sure that your defaults are set for 2D and make it easier for you to make 2D rather than 3D. All right. So you're going to create that. I want to save this. All right. So Unity is going to restart first, um, and then it's going to open up your new project. Now, when it opens up your new project, um, the, f the only thing that's going to be in here is a camera. So right here is your scene view. Now your scene view is basically where you're going to make most of the edits to your game. You're going to be changing locations of things, setting up uh, assets within your game, making it look all good. And then if you go up here, you'll see another tab called the game view. And the game view is giving you a literal view of what the player will see when he starts the game. So right now it's giving us a view from the camera, which, is, which we can see in the scene view. So again, the scene view is for editing. The game view is for previewing. All right. So, in the scene view, uh, you've got your main camera, which whenever you make a new project in Unity, it will automatically make a new camera. Now, this is going to be an orthographic camera because we set our defaults to be for 2D. If it was 3D, it would default to perspective. So, if you accidentally set it to 3D, you can change it to orthographic right here in the inspector. Um, uh, real quick thing, if you did create a project already and uh, you for you didn't know to set the defaults to 2D, you can simply go to Edit, Project Settings, and then go to Editor. And here you can change the default behavior mode to 2D or 3D. 2D, if you set it to 2D, it'll basically change pretty much everything that it would have changed if you had set the original project to be 2D. Uh, the only thing I know of that it doesn't change is up here in the scene view, uh, if you have 2D non-clicked, it will show you a perspective in the scene view. So you obviously want to have 2D clicked, so you get the orthographic view, which is basically the 2D view. Now, uh, on to the rest of the interface. Uh, the first thing you want to know about is your project folder. Now, your project folder is all of the assets that are in your that are able to be pulled to use for your game. So. Unity has a bunch of things which it has internally, but uh, the project folder is for the custom assets that you need for your game. Um, so if you go, uh, so you can actually find this folder in your browser by going to the place where you saved your project. So for instance, I saved my project at, at the beginning there with in my documents. So if I go to uh, here we go, documents. Um, You'll see that uh, if I go to my Unity tutorial folder, uh, you can. This is your basically. This is the folder where your game is located, and then the assets is your uh, personal assets for this game. So, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is create an asset for us to use in the game, and we're basically going to need a sprite to use as basically a demo object. So we're going to create a blank sprite that we can manipulate within Unity. We're not going to spend any time like drawing something because this is just a tutorial. Um, and I would say if you're creating, if you're starting out just creating a game, I would do this anyways because you don't want to jump into the art right away. You want to design the demo first um, to know what your player is going to be doing. So anyways, you're going to open up Photoshop. and uh, Or you can really use any, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be Photoshop. You can use Paint or anything. 
you want. Um, so basically what you do is, I've already done it, but you can create new and you're going to name it. I'm just going to name it blank. Um, and then I'd like to just create a 32 by 32 square because um, that's simple. And then you don't even have to do anything to it. You literally just save that. You're going to save it and you're going to find your project folder. Um, find your project folder. Go into your, save it into your assets folder. And you can save it as either a Photoshop file or a JPEG. Uh, if you, you can save it as a Photoshop file and it'll recognize it just as well. The only difference is that um, it'll be bigger when you build the game at the end. So I'm just going to save it as a JPEG because I don't really need to save it as a Photoshop file because it's just square. So now when you go back into Unity, you'll see now you've got this square in your assets folder. So your, this folder is literally going to contain pretty much anything new you make in the game. So even if I were to save this scene, so let's say I saved this scene, and I save it as a demo, that also would show up in your assets folder. So what I like to do with this is I like to keep it organized. So if you right click any blank space in the assets folder, you can create a folder. And so I could have one folder for scenes, and put that demo in there. And then I could create another folder, which I won't, but you could create another folder for sprites, but the sprites themselves I like to just keep out in the the bare assets folder, but uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, so anyways, um, the next thing you need to know about, so that's your project folder, the next thing you need to know about is the hierarchy. The hierarchy is going to show the things that are actually within the scene. So the project folder is the things that the Unity can pull out from your game, uh, in your game, the hierarchy is things that are in the actual scene. So the only thing that will be in here right now is the camera, because uh, every project starts with a camera, or every new scene, I should say, starts with a camera. Um, so if we wanted to add something new to this hierarchy, we could take something from our assets folder, for example, our JPEG image right here of blank. We can drag that right into the scene view, and Unity will make an object using that JPEG. Now, um, because our our uh, defaults are set to 2D, it's created this as a sprite. So uh, when you add this in, it's going to start with a sprite renderer and then a transform. So over here, what this whole thing, this whole sidebar basically is, is your inspector. When you click on a new object, when you click on a different object in your hierarchy or in the project folder, uh, it will show you the details and settings for that object. So, um, they select the camera. It's got the transform. Everything, every object in a scene has a transform with the position, rotation, and scale of that object. And then, obviously, it's got the camera component, which uh, makes it a camera. Um, you could add a cam if you wanted to. You could add a camera component to anything. I could add a camera component to my blank if I wanted to. You can add components to anything. So basically all an object is, is it's a store, it stores the components and it would have several components on it. So this one has the transform component which every object in the scene has and then it's got the default sprite renderer. So you could add a component if you wanted to to this object. Say you wanted to add a collider. Um, you would want to make sure it's a 2D collider because we are doing 2D. So if you type in, start typing in collider, it gives you all the options for a collider. Uh, so we could select Box Collider 2D, again, not regular Box Collider, but the 2D one. So select Box Collider 2D, and you've got your 2D Box Collider in there. And a collider is, you can it's pretty self-explanatory, it tells Unity when your object has collided with something. If, say, you wanted the collider to... There you go. If you wanted the collider to be smaller than the actual sprite, you could lower it or heighten it, you could lower it and have it be smaller and then that would make it so that uh, the this object is only going to collide here and it will if it if something comes above or on the side of that collider it won't it won't register at it it won't register it as a hit. Um so yeah so that's colliders. Um uh, well let me just remake this. Fuck collider T. Alright. Um so this is the inspector, this is the hierarchy, and this is the project folder. Something that I need to make sure you understand, however, is that the um, 
object in the hierarchy has not has is not going to be is not going to affect the object in the assets folder. So, uh, if I, for instance, I just added a box collider 2D to the object in the hierarchy. However, if I drag this in, this blank from this project in to Unity again, it will create the default sprite again because this is simply an image. So when I drag it in, it's just going to make the sprite things, but it's not going to register it as the same thing as this object. If you wanted to have uh, a asset in your project folder which copies the th something from your hierarchy, so say you made a, a enemy and you want to be able to use that enemy again in a different scene or a different um, location or whatever, you want to be able to drag it in and have it have the same properties. Um, what you can do then is, so let's for instance name this enemy. If you right click again, just like how you made the folder, if you right click in your assets folder, you can create um, a prefab. A prefab is basically an empty object and it's going to be something that is within the assets folder that uh, copies something that would be in the scene. So we can call this prefab enemy. And then if we drag your enemy from the hierarchy, which is in the scene, over to the prefab, it'll make a prefab that is the same as the enemy. So if we were to drag that into the scene, that is copying. As you can see, these two are have the exact same components. Um, and now enemy has turned blue to show that these both are uh, getting their information from this prefab. So if I were to change something within the prefab, uh, within the assets folder, I could change something in the assets folder and say change the color and make it red. Now all of those prefabs would become red. All right, so hopefully that all makes sense. Um, one last thing I wanted to say before you close, I close the video, is that uh, the assets that you put in, including like images and stuff, um, also have their own options within the inspector. Um, so, for example, with our JPEG image here, first of all, it's been brought in as a sprite, but there are several different ways that you could bring in a text in a uh, image. For example, you could bring it in as a texture, or you could bring it in as a user interface type object, uh, cursor, all these different things. But of course, we want it to be a sprite. Uh, you can if if it is a sprite, then it has these specific options. Um, First of all, you have two different sprite modes, single or multiple. Multiple is used if you have a sprite sheet, so it's if you have all of the animated frames in one sprite. And I'll show you how to do that later, but for now we're just going to keep it as a single. Um, pixels to units is going to say, um, that's pretty self-explanatory. For example, if I were to set this to 32, because my image is 32 pixels high, if I were to set the pixels to units to be 32, that would make the object in the scene be exactly one unit tall. So if I put this on the grid by making it be whole numbers, now it fits directly in one of our one of my grid squares and it's exactly one unit high and one unit wide. And now I can set this to be on the grid. Uh, to drag along the grid, you can hold control and then drag. Um, when you're selecting a 2D object, uh, there are points for scaling, however, if you select in the center, you can use that to move. The points are for scaling, and then uh, if you drag near the outside of the corner, you can rotate it that way. So it's very similar to how you manipulate image in PowerPoint, for example. Um, that's how you manipulate 2D objects, um, or a sprite, I should say. That's how you manipulate a sprite. A camera, for example, has uh, the same manipulation as any 3D object would, where it's got a Y movement, an X movement, and a Z movement. The Z movement is just a circle right now because we don't really have a Z movement because it's 2D. So, but we could drag the camera along the grid by holding control as well in one of these axes. And then this square around the camera is showing you how much the camera is going to view. So if I were to go into my game view, you can see our two enemies and it's in the exact same square uh, rectangle that the camera is showing. Uh, if I were to change the aspect of the game view, for example, if I were making this for a phone, and then you go into the scene view, you can see that the camera's rectangle has changed to reflect that. Now, if you wanted to make this bigger or smaller, you can go into the inspector and make sure you have your camera selected and change the size. First of all, make it make sure it's orthographic, and then change the size 
to be, say, if you want it to be bigger, you can make it like eight and it'll get bigger. And then if you go to the game, the enemies will be smaller because the camera size has gotten bigger. So it's like more zoomed out basically. Or you can just keep it as five. So you can edit that to your heart's content. Um, and I'm going to set this back to free aspect. If it's free aspect, it'll basically change depending on the size of the game view. So now I can make this game view bigger or smaller and it'll automatically change that. So if I go back to the scene, now it's even, now it's really thin. If I go back to the game view, I can change it back. Now it's wide again. Uh, if you, however, if you do have an aspect selected, then these uh, gray bars will gray out any part that's not part of the scene. Uh, I like developing it this way because this way I can see always what the player's going to see depending on what aspect ratio I want. Um, so I don't have to worry about when the camera changes, it's going to change my uh, what you see in the frame. Um, so yeah, so that's your camera. That's uh, This is the game view. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Just a basic rundown on the entire interface of Unity. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to be getting a little bit more into coding. So stay tuned for that. I'll try and get it out as soon as possible.